Well, hi, everyone. Welcome Join the to meeting. the next session in the prolific series on process mining. Today, we're going to get a little more technical. My name is uh, Kelly Chastening, and I am going to be your host. Uh, joining me is going to be Salem Hadim, who is head of the intelligent automation team at Prolifix, and also Animesh Jain. Um, he is a solution architect focused in on digital workforce solutions. Before we get started, just a quick reminder, if everybody could make sure they're on mute, that would be great. And also, I'd like to encourage you, if you have any questions, we absolutely would love your questions. Go ahead and put those into the chat on the right-hand side, and we will go ahead and address them at the end of the session. Thank you. So first, I think I'll start out with a recap for those of you that may have missed some of our earlier process mining um, events. Um, so what is process mining, and, and why would somebody want to do it? So let's go ahead and start with the benefits that come from it, and then how you can achieve those with process mining. So in, in general, process improvement initiatives, they can begin with a, a lot of value, um, bringing a lot of value to an organization. Um, but to know what to improve, you actually have to understand what's already going on. And with process mining, you can actually automate the effort to discover what is happening with your current processes. So this can include identifying where you know, inefficiencies are, or where processes are out of compliance. Um, but very importantly, it helps you to more rapidly figure out where to focus to achieve your process improvement objective, whatever that may be for your specific organization. Um, and this is a whole lot faster than the traditional methods. And it can guarantee your outcomes um, at the end of it. And we'll, we'll have more on that a little later. So let's talk about what is different with process mining. And this probably looks familiar to everybody. So traditionally, process improvement relies on um, people describing, you know, what is going on in their particular business process. Uh, we bring a bunch of people into a room and we include the subject matter experts. And you see a lot of stickies and you see a lot of whiteboarding and descriptions of what is going on. And honestly, this can work. Prolifix has done these type of things as well for years. But because of these exact experiences, this is why we really appreciate process mining more than ever. This technique can work, but unfortunately, oftentimes we'll find later that it wasn't completely accurate. It was maybe a little incomplete and it wasn't done on purpose. It's really more a factor of, you know, processes tend to span multiple systems and people may not always be aware of what others are doing. So process mining overcomes some of the limitations in traditional Join methods the by using actual data from the process to accurately show what's going on. So let me take you through what that means. So on this particular screen, you see a business process going on. In this case, it's claims, and it is spanning multiple systems. And as workers go about doing their day-to-day -day jobs, um, they are actually generating what we call digital footprints. This is data that specifically goes into system logs, goes into databases, and explains exactly the task that was taking place and time values that go with it, which is extremely important when it comes to cycle time. So as having the digital footprints, we actually in process mining tap into these digital pieces of data and we use them to actually visualize the process. We look at this as a way of being very accurate and seeing many things. So the auto generation of the diagrams that you see on here, um, they're visuals of the process, not only of the happy path, but also all the variances in the process as well. And there are important metrics like volumes and time um, that can be captured automatically as part of the process mining exercise to build your business case for improvement. So, before I turn this over to Salem um, to really dive deeper into this, um, I'd like to just go ahead once again and remind you, if you have any technical questions that come up along the way, please go ahead and put them into the chat. And with that, I will turn it over to Salem. Please go ahead, take it from here. Thank you, Kili, and uh, morning or good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. So as Kili mentioned, now that we all understand process mining um, and then also how it works, at Prolifix, obviously, we have devised uh, a methodology, a methodology that actually 
uh, is changing the way we do process discovery, process improvement in general. It, so we made it much more to be data driven. So uh, what we have put forth is a methodology that actually leverages data in a bottom-up approach perspective. This is what you see in the right skills. And then we are able to build business cases for improvement before a given initiative is launched. So beforehand, there is an initiative. We do some uh, process discovery, but then we are really not sure about the results. In this case, our business case for improvement will be evidence-based, and then we build it in very, very fast uh, way because we are leveraging a process mining methodology, a process mining tool that allows us first to be very agile in the way we discover processes. So we are moving from a manual way of doing things more into an automated uh, process discovery that actually leverages those uh, data, those digital footprints Kelly explained earlier from the different business operations that happen. So our methodology is agile because as you are putting those improvement opportunities at the end of, let's say, small initiative or big initiative, you are able to go and then we discover the data again because the infrastructure is ready. And then you are able to then improve it even further without relying on IT to actually give you reports or monitor that's using a different tool. And, and most importantly, our methodology, which uh, something that is very, very key in any initiative, uh, because we have now data evidence, our methodology is, has a guaranteed outcome. So we'll be able to quantify um, what will be the KPIs in which you will be getting improvement. So in operational excellence organization, they look to reduce costs, they look to improve employee productivity, they look to reduce cycle time, and then even measure customer satisfaction. So part of the business case that we are building will be having this outcome and then we engage in that continuous improvement, which is like the monitoring aspect of that outcome and then the changes that we make uh, as we are actually rolling out improvement opportunities that could, that could be uh, an automation opportunity, which could be as simple as an overall digital transformation um, initiative or a data initiative as well. And then uh, this is really where uh, we wanted to take more of a larger view of the areas where process mining can make an impact. I think uh, we all know that operational excellence and an employee of, of, um, productivity is one of the key benefits because you are able to go and then discover your process, improve your process, and then depending on the, the pain points, depending on what you are seeing as not going well in the process, you devise the correct automation solution. It could be a digital worker, it could be a workflow solution, a content management solution. However, it doesn't stop there, right? So process mining recently, it's taking traction even in leading and then shaping up digital transformation initiatives. And then the way this works is, is uh, it's very, in fact, obvious. As you can see, people, before they launch a digital transformation, they would like to actually link it to how they do their internal operations and then how do they service their customers. So a lot of those insights, as you are taking multiple business operation processes, you are you are very quick into pointing out where are the pain points and then put that part of the digital transformation and then where are you going to be prioritizing? What will you come first in your digital transformation? What will be the first channel, the second channel, an omni-channel strategy? And then this is where we are seeing a huge traction in leveraging process mining as that visibility and then discovery tool. Another area, it's expanded to customer journey mining. And then this is really just uh, the same concept. As you are mining the journey of your employees as they do work, now you are actually getting that those data from the touch points you have with your customers, whether through a mobile device, whether through a web portal that you have offered, you are able to actually take those touch points, but then directly map them to the operations that your internal folks, and then the way they have reacted to that customer. It could be how long it took them to do it. What is it they have done first? Second, did they respect the order or like the policies or the procedures that you have indicated to them? So now we are seeing a huge adoption of process mining in even um, 
creating evidence-based customer journey mining. And then the third area, it's very interesting as well, a fourth area, last but not least, is the data science and then governance aspect of it. So one of the challenges I'm sure you have faced in this in applying data science, uh, which is we have a set of data scientists talking to business. One of the pain points is doing prediction, doing data science on business attributes that make sense to business. So process mining is really um, uh, being used in understanding your data and then selecting those business attributes that then you can fit to process to, to actually uh, uh, machine learning model and data science exercise so that you are able to converge to much better prediction results, much better machine learning results because you have process mining allowed you to actually take just a subset of those predictors as we call them that actually give you much more tangible results. And uh, this is in fact, will be another subject of another session that Prolifix will do. So that we are going to be uh, doing a deep dive on uh, on how process mining can be combined with the data science exercise. Um, so talking about methodology, um, it's very, so, so a process mining exercise can be short, can be long, but then it's very important to follow a certain level uh, of stages of steps, so that if it's very successful. And what we have at Prolifix, um, we, we we put the five step stages for successful process mining exercise. And then as practitioner, as technical person, as a business analyst, these are generally the five key steps. The, the first step is it's very important into just not going into jumping in the data, trying to interpret the data. It's very important to start by quick um, understanding of the business process through the business SME process owner that actually oversees that process understand the systems that is being leveraged in that process, and then understand the steps at the high level. They don't have to be all the steps, but then just understanding what are the business goals, uh, what are the user personas, uh, what are the process milestones at the high level, and then the activities, and then what is being done, what is being recorded in each system. So this is a very, very key. And then generally in our jumpstart, we focus to show value very quickly on the steps that we no, and then more like instead, if we have a process that has like 100 steps, we focus maybe on the 10 first steps or the 10 steps in which we have most of the info to drive the value. The next step um, is more of the data extraction. And then what we have seen is two cases. One case is really slam dunk. You have systems in which we have a connector, part of the process tool, minings that we leverage, and then we are quickly able to connect your with your data store and then just jumping into the next steps of creating an event table and then um, do the process mining exercise. But then, but then there is a case in which your system is home ground, it doesn't follow uh, a normalized data structure that one of the connectors understand it. And then that's really where Polyfix put a methodology to quickly normalize that data from a raw data into a normalized data with data models construction. And then we rely on that on the event table structure. Uh, so any mesh would be showing you an example of a, an event table because that's actually the, the fundamental that drives that normalization and then how quickly we are able to normalize data. And then sometimes we leverage our digital worker like pre-built, a pre-built in fact script that accelerate that normalization of data, even if your system is on ground. And we really, we create the event table. And during the event table creation, uh, we have uh, what we call as the core part of the event table, right? I know I'm getting very technical. That's actually the purpose of this session. Uh, obviously, you will see here in a demo. But then uh, one of the best practices around building the event table is really focusing on the core part of the event table, and then an image will show it through an event ID, um, a, a set of timestamps for each activity, the users that will work in each activity, and then you give it a first try with a good selection of business attributes on which the first run of process mining tool will focus. And then at the end, um, not at the end, actually then the key part, that's really when process mining now comes in into the picture. This is really where 
uh, you, you need to have experience with the different views that uh, a process mining tool provides. And then these views, they uh, the one I like is more like the variance analysis. It really tells you uh, where basically the process um, focuses from a happy path perspective. But then also it tells you, is your process is it executing as you were thinking it was executing, right? For example, if you have an order to cash, is uh, all the orders getting fulfilled the way you were thinking it, it, it's getting fulfilled, right? Uh, and then you will see, in fact, in most of the cases, you will, maybe we have seen cases in which only 40% to 50% going how we were thinking the process was getting executed. And the last step, uh, it's about um, selecting the improvement opportunities. And then this is really the experience of knowing the how, I would say, process mining gave you the, what is wrong, the opportunities for improvement, but then you need to know what kind of tools, what kind of technologies you would use to actually act on those improvement opportunities. And then that's why we have automation, would be one of them, and probably employee productivity. That's another one in which you are enabling your employees with the correct tool to do their work better with some recommendation on how they do their work. Um, there are some things you can set up regarding the certain compliance. Like you, basically, as you do your mining exercise, you tell it that my process needs to comply with this um, statement of procedures, for example. And then you will get, in fact, the direct result. Are you complying to those key things that you put forward? And uh, there is then the KPI and then the benchmarking analysis. This is more of a uh, process mining, in fact, it's not just a discovery tool, but then it's a monitoring tool in which you can put certain KPIs and you are able then to monitor your process based on those KPIs. So this is a, really the methodology theoretically. Uh, obviously, there is no better way to show things in practice. At this point, I will turn it over to Animesh and then he will show exactly these five steps on how we do them uh, using a demo uh, and, then, uh, and then the tool. Animesh, it's all yours. Thank you, Salim. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session on process mining. And today, uh, the tool that we are using is PAF now. This tool works on top of Power BI, and that's the one we are gonna look into it today. Now, this is one of the tool on process mining. There are a couple of big ones um, as well, such as Salonis uh, from Software AG, Process Goal from UiPath, et cetera. But PAF now is a pretty lightweight tool. It works on your existing Power BI platform and can be used very quickly to do especially a jumpstart type of an engagement. So the key part is first to understand the event model. Now there are two aspects to event model. One is what the tool actually creates and what we create when we are working as a data analyst. And what you see in here is the tool version of the event log. Typically in an event log, you are gonna have an activity name, you are gonna have an indicator field which ties up all this activity, which is a case ID, um, some timestamp, which is a start timestamp and an end timestamp, and then a ton of different business values. So pretty much from a business perspective, you can analyze your process from four different verticals. You can look into it to understand what is the cost incurred by my process. Now that cost can be something which is your operational cost. It can be something which is your penalties and stuff that incurs, et cetera. You can look into it more to see from a duration perspective, how long the process takes. You can look into it more from a resource perspective that what type of resources are working from a risk and a compliance perspective, that what exactly is the risk and the quality and the compliance factor associated with my process. So based on your business questions or your business outcome that you are expecting, different type of business KPIs are added into an event log. In our example, as we will be using a healthcare claim adjudication as part of our case study here, so I've included some variables such as the claim amount, the cost of processing, uh, the duration that it took for the claim uh, to actually complete its work, was the claim doing a rework, uh, who had the resources working, et cetera. So this is the first stage, the basic step that happened where you are looking at your raw data. From that raw data perspective, you identify the relationships between those raw data and then create an event log, then convert that event log into a model that the tool expects. Now each tool, there is a core part of the event log that every tool expects in the same way, but then there are a couple of extra variances that keeps on getting added as you move from a tool to tool. 
and then you kind of configure it in here, and then you are in. Once you are in, then you use this visualization. And right now, let's start with the first visualization, which is a process explorer view. Now, as you can see here, there are multiple different variants that are showing up. Now, I can start from this view, which is the primary path. Now, the primary path definition is the path which was most traversed. So here it shows that there are a total of 113 claims that came in, and this is the path that they took on an case-by-case -case manner. And what we are seeing is, just by looking at this process model and as you are trying to analyze it, you see that from claim receive activity to a classification of claim activity, you took an average of 18 hours and six minutes. And it says that um, average duration was 18 hours, minimum was two hours, but then some of the claims, it took one day for them to get into a receive claim to a classify claim transition. So one key area where you look into it um, and then you say that looks a certain place that I can definitely add speed in here when you're looking at it from an efficiency perspective. Maybe the claims is coming in a batch mode and you want to increase and make it more of an API driven solution and just add some type of a real time APIs to speed up the process. Now this is one path and it shows that this is your primary path which was taken. But at the same time, I also want to understand what are the different variations that happen Again, as I keep on dragging it, it starts showing me those visuals here. It shows me that um, out of this, there were a certain number of claims, 18 to be precise, which actually had a rejection and they went all the way back into receive claims. Okay. Uh, I do see that there were some of the parts which took it from establish to all the way to determination of cost, where they actually skipped some steps, et cetera. And I notice a problem as well. What I notice here is I have determined cost and then I have remit charge, which is perfect. But then why do I have remit charge and then determine cost? This doesn't look like um, a, uh, this doesn't look like what business will expect. This is definitely a process failure. It seems like there are some steps in the system, if there are IT systems or the human that they are working in, they are bypassing some steps, doing the remittance. Uh, beforehand, even before getting an exact amount of the cost determination, or maybe they are redoing the cost part, but something seems to be off here. Okay, another uh, input that you got from an improvement perspective. Keep on dragging, and as you keep on going in here, you see all the different paths that your process takes. Now, typically in an enterprise, everybody knows the process at a high level. It's the leakages that are pretty much most of the time goes undetected. And all these different variations are the one that people are not even aware of. They like, oh, this happens this way. And yep, this is how your flow is. What the tool does is, along with helping us visualize all these variations, now it has also created these variant filters here. And then it gives me a count of each of these variant filters. So you can see what is your primary variant that was working. Most of the time, your primary variant should be your happy path or should be the process model that is benchmarked by the business, whereas the other ones maybe are something offshoots that happen either organically because people came in, they were working earlier, then they left the organization, some new people came in, or they changed the way they were working because of some IT stuff. Working from home uh, in this COVID situ situation definitely had a change in the process. Maybe people started downloading some sensitive documents into their uh, laptop, which was definitely not expected earlier. All those kind of organic growth can happen, which can result in multiple different process variants. And we can see here all the different process variants. Now, all these are highly customizable. Once you click a flow, based on that flow, there are certain data fields that comes in, and you can convert those data fields in terms of what type of value you want to see. So now, let's take a look uh, one step more. And what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing the process from a count perspective. I also want to change the flow and I want to see from an amount perspective that when it happens on a node, these are known as node, when it happens on a node, how much of money actually I'm losing or how much of claim amount I'm not paying correctly because it takes into some part which was not approved by me. So very simple uh, to do that, go into your node part and once you are into your node, size, node highlight, edge volume, variant. You can choose multiple different uh, based on your specific need. And what we are going to do here is we are going to expand this one out, and then we are going to take the claim amount 
and then map the claim amount here, which is my total cost. And I'm mapping the node size as total cost. Now, once I do that, a uh, change happens in the process and I will be able to see that amount of data on how it is moving from a claim amount perspective, it starts flowing the path here. Uh, other thing I want to do is instead of just mapping on the node size, I also want to see it on the legend um, of um, the node itself. So I am mapping it on the legend part here. And then I start seeing that data and it starts showing me that information that this is how your data has flown. And once you go in here, it tells you this was the total cost of these many different claims that came in. This is how the total cost of 1.07 million, that, that's how it has happened, et cetera. So variety of different metrics that you are looking into it and extracting the information from there. And once you are in extracting the information, you can again uh, work on that. The other part is along with the cost, what I want to see is the total claim amount itself. So um, in here, based on all the data that you have, you can keep on doing those selection. And then in term, and again, all these are the terms of different data attributes that you created in your event log. Okay, so it's on us to see what type of data we want uh, in terms of analysis, what is our primary perspective, and then how I want to use that primary perspective and then understand this data. And now the next one I want to see in addition to total cost is the aggregated claim amount as well. So I just, I can drop it here. And then once this happens, um, I will have again, the visual just gets updated with that new information. And then I am able to see that data when I go in here that, okay, this is how the claim amount happened. This is how the transition is happening. And this is how the claim amount of $16,000 went to this one. Whereas here in these parts, this is how the overall flow that is happening. So different type of variations you can play around. Now this, what you're looking right now is a static data, but in real time, it will not be a static data. It will be connected to your enterprise systems so that you can quickly refresh it and kind of see this one. So just for our demo purpose, I have created another subset of data, which is on my uh, desktop and I'm just gonna reload it. So right now I have 113 claims. Let us just reload and then see how the variance happens. So as I'm reloading the data, it loads all the event data, everything back from, um, from all the data sources, which I have created in my local. And once it has reloaded the data, it now updates the visual. Again, as it is updating the visual, all the count, et cetera, are getting changed. So now I see that I have a total of 149 different claims, and that's how they are flowing together. Now, in this analysis, as we were moving along, we did notice that there was a transition between receive claim and uh, the claim segmentation, and it was taking a longer duration. Now, what's that? And, and then we know that, okay, this was a problem that IT team identified in 2019. By end of 2019, they made some fix, so it should have improved in 2020, but has it really improved? So let's take a look. So in here, I'm just gonna do a filter for 2020 and then see that, okay, when I just select 2020, how will my process variation change? And let me just go into the base view so it becomes easy for us from a visual perspective. Now, as I'm zooming in here, and I did notice that from a receive claim, to a classify claim, it has definitely improved. Now it is saying average duration is 15 hours. So it improved by three or four hours in there. And there, um, there are a couple of claims that have still got into a part of uh, one day, but the average duration or the minimum duration is two hours and 16 minutes. So on an average, there is an improvement, uh, but still there's something more to be done. Now with this part, this is my first primary analysis that I have done. What I want to do now is I want to do a drill down and you can create all this hierarchy here and then see this information based on hierarchy. Again, these hierarchy information that we are doing are all configurable. I have configured the hierarchy into two different parts. One is the du duration, which is the time taken for the claim to process in days, and then the number of cases. And I want to see everything that happened in 2020, uh, which has taken up a certain amount of days. So I filter based on that and I get a new visual here and I can again analyze that visual and see how things are happening. And here, when I again see this, the average duration is again went down to 10 hours. So again, there is a steady improvement that is being performed by the IT team. And I'm getting that insight. And I can again see all the different variations that is happening here as well. And I noticed that now I have only two different variations. 
versus all the nine different variations that was happening in 2019. So definitely the process is hardened as well. You are, it is much more structured, much more controlled from a compliance perspective. There are only certain set of variations and very effectively you can control it and make sure that this is working fine. Now with this part, this is my first uh, base view. The next I want to do is, I want to go into my difference analysis. Now in difference analysis, I want to see the differences between variations and probably I want to mark some of them as conforming or some of them as non-conforming. And in here, I want to select everything and then see how these things are moving along. Now, as I see in here, there are tons of different um, activities happening, different color code for different reasons. And these color codes are pretty easy in terms of you can select these activities and then you can just say that, yep, I agree, this is how they should have performed. So you can mark this as a conforming or you say, nope, this was not supposed to happen and you can mark this as non-conforming. It helps a lot when we are um, creating the process model and then when we are reviewing this with business to kind of refine this information, that's where the conforming, non-conforming comes in to understand that these are something which are outliers and they should be controlled. Uh, again, control can be through a people training, it can be through automation by improving the system, or it can be by improving the process itself. So you get an idea um, on these parts, then you can move to the next part, which is benchmarking. Now these are all tons of different reports. There are tons of different out-of-box reports. There are custom reports as well that you can create. What I'm showing you here right now is uh, the out-of-box reports that is provided by the PathNow tool. Now in here, as I'm comparing, I'm seeing that this is what my happy path was. This is my process. Um, this was my benchmark process. This is my process that I'm seeing here, uh, which is I'm calling as a happy start. And what I've noticed is that from a comparison perspective, there are tons of activities that are marked in green, are, are marked in red because they are not conforming. So pretty much when you do this analysis or looking into your process path, you are able to understand not just the variant of the process, but even the different activities that are being performed in the process, are those something that you expected or are those something that was not expected at all? So similarly, going through multiple different, uh, different reports of looking into variants, trying to do a filter based on variants, trying to understand um, the impact of the variant, maybe doing a root cause analysis for that variant. And I've selected a variant and I'm making a selection here to start and it will, say me that, yep, it has zero self loop, so all good, 100% compliant, pretty good. Okay, what about the other variant? And when I do the other variant and we run it, it can again run that data, and based on that none of the data, it will help me identify that, okay, for this variant, what was the compliance factor? Does it have any self loop? Yes, it has a self loop, only 30.4% compliant, so not much. Um, so those kind of information you can get here from a variant analysis perspective. The other interesting part is to look into compliance analysis. Now, in terms of compliance analysis, uh, the visual that you are seeing right now is at a transaction level. The earlier ones where it all, it all were grouped in terms of count just to make it easy on the eye. Here it is all transactions, individual transactions are listed here. Again, um, as you are going through these variants, you can even export, you may want to see the core data. And let's take a look at that data part first before we come in here so that we can quickly map it out. So what I want to do here is um, I want to, I am seeing the process, which is well and good, but at the same time, I want to see the data as well to make sure that yes, this is the data that you looked into. And you can just launch the data. It will show you all information about the data. It will load all tons of information which are present here based on what all data you have populated, it can show all this information and then you can kind of take a look and then understand that yes, uh, it's the right data that was expected. So with that knowledge, let's move into my compliance analysis. And in my compliance analysis, what I notice is all these claims are good, but for claim number one, two, three, six, there seems to be a problem. This claim was rejected and then immediately it was updated. So it's a separation of duties problem because after the claim was rejected, ideally my process should have enforced it to go all the way to receive claim and then start the process from there. It seems like the person who rejected the claim was the same person who updated the claim as well. So I have a weakness. 
fine, understand. Uh, I got an idea about the weakness. Now I have to understand how to fix it. And we understood that, okay, this can be fixed by automation. And okay, um, ask the IT team, they can make some changes in the system and then up update the system and put it in there, et cetera. And I, what I want to do now is, now at, till this stage, you were more into the improvement analysis part of the story. Now what you want to do is, you want to use this tool to even monitor how the new instances and stuff are behaving and how they're going in. Now to do that part, you can, there are two different ways. One was that, okay, I can just refresh it and then filter it to see that, okay, show me the data for June, for, in the, for the month of June, 2020, or I can extract the data as an offline load and then again, import it and create a different report just to compare it. So let's do this. Um, in our example, um, let us export the data. So this was my initial data. And what I'm, uh, I'm going to do is, this is my updated data, and I'm going to import that updated data. Now, this new extract, um, this is my information. To convert it into the tool-specific model, PathNow provides what is known as a PathNow companion. And I'm just going to drag and drop this Excel file here. Do a next. It gives me the default configuration. It says that you are using this from a previous transformation. I can reinitialize it and then redo this mapping, or I feel, nope, that's good enough because this is just an update of the previous one. So the data is updated, not the data structure itself. So I'm good. Let's just start and then fine. Uh, my data is converted. Now, this is a report and I'm going to open that report now. And as I'm opening this report, it's going to launch another version of Power BI. So you can have two working together, two different versions of the report working together to do a comparison, eye to eye comparison. And then on this report, as it is coming up, I will be able to provide this path information, which I got from my companion. And let me just copy the path part here and start keying in the path part um, as soon as this thing comes up. As you are keying in that data, and you are uh, putting this information in here, it's gonna reload everything, and then it will show you the data on how it looks like for that month of June. And we will see that information updated part in just a minute. So quite simple in terms of uh, once you have this event log, getting this information in here, and then seeing from a monitoring perspective how you were doing earlier and how you are doing today, it's quite simple. You can do an direct connect, you can do an offline connect. There are tons of APIs provided by the tool as well. You can use those APIs to create a more automated solution um, as you want, where it can just take a look and if there are any variance that is it is detecting, it will start generating alerts to a mailbox, et cetera. So those all part of um, stuff, uh, monitoring stuff can be configured in the tool part. And again, as it is working on top of Power BI, so if you need to use, uh, in addition to the process mining capability, if you want to use the data mining capability as well, definitely use those visualizations to just enhance your report. Now here, what I see is there was a change or there were a couple of changes done. And I'm noticing that now this has improved a lot. It just says that two hours, 16 minutes is the time it takes. There are no outliers process model has streamlined a lot more. There's basically only two different variant. One seems to be the happy path, which is being done by almost all the claims that I received in the month of July. And then there's one which has somehow broken. It uh, seems like there was a cost issue and that is why the claim was again rejected and it went all the way back. Fine, looks good so far. Let's take a look at the variant cycle. Uh, again, from a root cause perspective and stuff, the variant cycle looks good as well. Not much here. Everything looks green. So, so good. Uh, so far, so good. Now, as you were using this more from a monitoring perspective, you can also go into the monitoring dashboard and see that maybe the rate of automation has improved here. And then how, how much it has improved. And let's just compare it with the previous version of the report to see how it was working earlier and all with all this IT change, how these things are working now. So you can use this more as a dashboard type of stuff as well. And here I'm seeing that KCF itself loops for 20.69. Here they have now pretty much it's zero. 
and it has improved by 11 percentage points. And then variant are just 2, 50 percent. There it was just 14. So definitely there's an improvement in the overall process improvement cycle. In addition, now, but there was one person or one claim which I see that it had a rejection. And it seems to be a valid rejection because, uh, yeah, there was some uh, confusion in the price. So it was again rejected. Let's take a look. So when I go into compliance analysis and I see everything looks good, everything is uh, nice, seems structured, very structured, and so far no issues detected. But wait a minute. When I scroll it, and then I see something red in color, and it shows that this is the one, this is the one incident which was rejected. And then I realized that it was not rejected because of cost. It was rejected because this was a duplicate claim. So you got that insight that from a duplicate claim perspective, your process is fine uh, overall because it was able to catch the duplicate somehow and then reject it. But what ideally you would have wanted is that when you are ingesting the claim itself, when maybe you want to have a gatekeeper in the beginning of the process itself, and don't even have a, a duplicate claim come in, just reject it upfront. Why to waste all this processing, take it all the way till the end, and then finally reject it. So yeah, it's a continuous improvement. You improved a lot. There are still some aspects where you can harden your process, fine tune it to make it much better. So that's the overall flow from a process mining fast now tool perspective that I wanted to cover today. Uh, again, there are a variety of different reports. Uh, there are a variety of different visuals. There are a variety of different customizations or filters that you can create. You can filter based on, there are some default, which is you can filter based on the count. And there are custom that you can filter based on claim amount. Again, based on your business process, you can have that I want to filter based on the type of IT systems this process is using. Or I want to filter based on the user group that this, this uh, process are using. Everything is open. So pretty much from a boundary perspective, it's on us, how we want to leverage it. Uh, a niche tool in terms of giving the insights and helping us to improve uh, from a process perspective, data driven. So you know that all this information that I'm seeing in here are basically my data and I can export my data to do an offline uh, revision into a CSV or I can just take a look at the data on the fly uh, as a table and see if I want to kind of go deep into one specific aspect of the data and then look into it, what this data means? Does the data look good? Are there any outliers there? Um, I can again customize my report. So overall gives you a good um, tool in your hand to look into the process model from the data perspective, identify the improvement opportunities, help them implement it. And once those are implemented, again, use this tool to monitor the improvement and actually get a guarantee part from what you were expecting when you wanted to improve versus the outcome that you are able to get now. Are those in sync? Or maybe you expected a different type of return, you are getting a different type of return, or maybe something else broke. So you can use this on a real-time basis, nothing like I want to see the data for last six months, on a real-time basis, monitor your process, monitor your improvement, and keep improving. So with this, uh, I will pause, and uh, um, I'll pass it on to Kelly. Um, if you guys have any technical question, we'll be happy to answer. And Amesh, wow, that was great. You know, myself and, and Salam, obviously, we started out a little bit about what it is and, and you know, the methodology. But this clearly brings home, you know, that old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Um, seeing it in action is, is pretty powerful and, and very impressive. So what I want to do, like you said, is I'd like to go ahead and take in any questions um, from our audience. Um, I did notice that I have some shy people that are on this particular event, and some people went ahead and actually messaged me their questions privately. So I'll go ahead and start with those. And then the rest of you, if you have anything that, you know, you would like to ask, please go ahead and put it in the chat. We'd love to address your questions as well. So first, let me go ahead and say, sounds to me like um, some of the terminologies that we used, um, maybe they were considered interchangeable or not clear. So let's just, let's just touch on that. So one of the questions I had asked was, is process mining related to data mining? Yeah, I, yeah, definitely process mining and the data mining, they are related. However, 
you can actually think of process mining as one of the sub-discipline of data mining, but then the focus is different. The process mining gives more of an operational, more, on, more of a process context to it. When you do your analysis, you are focusing more into the different path that your process has taken and then why it took that specific path. And then also in the process, identify uh, the key business value attributes of your process, why it took a certain path and that, that actually led to missing uh, maybe an SLA or maybe missing a compliance uh, analysis, just like how an image actually covered. Data mining, the focus is uh, more larger. Generally, they will give you uh, more of a reason, uh, like look, I, for example, look why my customer churn uh, has happened in this region versus this, and then what is actually the prediction for the next year or so. This is more of the data mining aspect of this. It's not like basically what was the process execution that led to that churn, more of um, basically give me the prediction based on that. Okay. Okay. I think that was helpful. Um, another one, um, I know Anna Mesh, you actually talked about conformance and you also talked about compliance. So I think maybe they need a clarification on the difference between those two. So uh, conformance analysis um, helps you in understanding the deviations of your process. And then you want to look into those deviations to see that are those deviations something that I was expecting or they just happened. That's from a conformance perspective. Compliance analysis more is more to look into it that is this process performing under a certain boundary that I have decided earlier in terms of the policies, the federal or the state regulations, et cetera. So yeah, they are used interchangeably sometimes, but they are quite different in terms of what you are getting the outcome out of those two. One is more to understand the different variants and then which all variants is your primary and then which all are outliers. The other is more to understand that from a risk tolerance perspective, is it working underneath a certain set of structure and is the process behavior tightly controlled or not? It sounds like audit teams would really appreciate having that yeah. point of view. Yes, so uh, just to add on that, um, a lot of the recent stuff, a lot of companies, what they have been using is they've, they've started using process mining more from their auditing perspective itself, instead of having asking somebody to send me your process models, which I want to audit or send me a lot six months of data, which I want to look into. They are saying, here is my process uh, mining. And then you just start using it together and then just use it together and just see how the outcomes are behaving. And then accordingly, you just know it on the fly, whether it is risk tolerant or I have had some type of an exception. Got it, okay. So um, I had another question here. Um, what are the top industries or sectors that would use process mining? Um, they said like finance, manufacturing, insurance. Is, are there particular ones that really are adopting this faster than others? So process mining is relatively new in continental US. Um, it's used, um, it's leveraged a lot in, uh, in European and Asian nation. It started from there. And the variety of usage is, it spans across all the industry. So uh, just to give some examples, um, there is a, a hospital in Israel that they started using process mining so that they can quickly understand that if the person, if the patient is a cancer patient, then assign an oncologist much more early instead of going through all the 15 tests. So hospitals, insurance, retail are using it more from a customer analysis, journey analysis, and doing a funnel analysis to see where I want my customer to go and how I want the behavior to be. So it's, it's being used in, in pretty much all the area. Uh, what I what I feel personally that in U.S. Uh, insurance uh, sector, uh, finance, they will be taking it more right now because of the COVID situation that happened to understand and tie up their processes. Makes sense. So another question that was asked earlier is, and this is a good one, can the tool fix the process problems as well? So I know you've talked about how to kind of capture the process, understand what's going on, and identify areas of opportunities. What about actually fixing the problems? Um, uh, yeah, so, so part of the uh, process mining tools, really they differ, definitely. So they tell you where the problem is and then 
uh, leveraging our methodology, we are able to know how to fix it. Now, depending on the process mining tool that a given organization purchases, there are process mining tools that offer even the automation aspect, right? For example, Celonis, it does have uh, more of an automation module and then also um, a business integration model that actually is able to create a workflow and then go and then fix that problem directly. So the answer, the short answer is definitely yes. Now, there are process mining tools that just focus more into this is the problem. You have enough data to know how to fix it. Then they give you the choice of now acting on it the way that you would like. Sometimes it's more of doing automation, removing manual effort, and then you would like to actually leverage one of your investments in workflow, for example, right? Then you can definitely get all the necessary um, uh, insights, information to actually long, launch that improvement project within one of the investment uh, modules or, or software that you have in-house as well. Awesome, awesome. So. I have a question that I'm going to ask you guys to cover. Um, you know, I work with a lot of clients and we've been talking with them about process mining. And, um, you know, so many of our, the organizations out there right now, because of COVID and, and other things going on in our economic climate, are really looking to figure out, you know, how can I, how can I get started quickly? What can I do to, um, you know, get going and actually see the benefits that come out of this. What What is it that they can do to make this happen sooner rather than later? A uh, great question, uh, definitely. And then also it's always a question because definitely starting the right way is very key to make sure your process mining exercise is successful. And basically what you are not going to be getting to blame. This is an issue of the tool of a process mining if you are not started quickly. So. And then that's why at Polyfix we have what we call as a jumpstart. And then we have a free day, um, uh, basically free workshop, discovery workshop that we offer more to kind of assess where you are and then your readiness for process mining. And what you see in here, um, the key is to establish your data readiness, right? Because accessing your data and then understanding your business process at a high level is very, very key. And then depending on where you stand, generally we look into two use cases. You are, using, you are using very known systems and then our connectors will work. In that case, our jumpstart in simple format is a really good way to get started. And then you don't have really to spend a lot of time learning how to do all those views that Anima shared, how to tackle your process so that you are quickly able to move from step five step four that I mentioned earlier to step six means you are combining, creating a business case very quickly and um, getting into uh, then the business outcomes we refer to. However, if you have homegrown system, you have more of complex data structure, then we have um, uh, what we call as a jump start with data extraction and then preparation. And then this is really first we divide when we are doing the type preparation and then extraction so that you don't confuse it with process mining. Then there is the process mining job starts that will follow uh, on that. And then generally in two weeks, uh, when you see the box of simple jump start, we are, we are really able to uh, prove results. And once you uh, get the adoption started quickly, we have uh, an offering. Uh, I will quickly cover this, uh, what we refer to as process automation as a service process mining and automation and service, which is what you see on the right side, we are able, in fact, to guarantee um, what we refer to as, as, as automation points. And depending on the process, you can actually purchase a level of operation, uh, uh, automation points from Polyfix, and then also uh, a level of outcome, what we call as value points. And then uh, you, you get to use those when you want, uh, more into a long-term engagement for more of an enterprise rollout engagement. Um, and uh, in fact, just to add on that, uh, this is really a mindset change um, in, in which before, uh, I would say in two days' word, uh, people would go and then um, identify automation opportunities, uh, 
similar to these automation points, but then they do it the manual way. And then sometimes, obviously, the objective is met. Sometimes it's not met. However, our methodology really focuses on leveraging process mining and then task mining. So task mining will directly give you the automation points or the automation focus that you would like to focus on. And then the process mining, which is really takes more of a holistic view and give you that business outcome, what we call as value points, because you can easily map them to a business outcome from a business point of view. Um, I will take a very quick example. So uh, a value, an automation point can be as simple as creating um, a digital worker that actually copy from an Excel spreadsheet to an ERP, right? But then in the process, you are able to save uh, maybe um, a seven-man hour in a day. So that's actually the value, the, the, the outcome. That's actually the value point, right? What is the cost you are saving? And then also how fast you are making it. Um, and then the man hours you are saving all goes into operational excellence, cost reduction, uh, and then faster cycle time. This could be a value point that we will be uh, committing that we will be providing once you purchase these automation points. Salam, this is good. So, so I think I, it's. Uh, did you have uh, a final comment, a Animesh? Yeah. Uh, yes, I received a question, and sorry, I was uh, uh, typing my response there. So I received a question. It's a great question. Uh, is uh, can you use it for IT processes? So absolutely, process mining can be used for IT processes. Uh, like the digital transformation uh, when we are talking about. Um, you can start it at a big level to see I want to use uh, process mining to understand the type of workloads that I want to migrate to cloud. You can do it at that level. Or you can go it to say I want to analyze my customer service team and I want to see that the type of systems that they are using, how much time it is taking for them to enter data into the system, how is their interactions with the UI that I have created. You can go there. Or you can also use it to understand which type of uh, systems are having a spike in their performance during what time of the day and how I can kind of detect it and then resolve it. So based on how you want to place it, what is your, your outcome that you're expecting, you can use it at different layers and definitely IT system um, and mapping it to your IT processes is a key area where process mining will show a great outcome. So we need to go ahead and wrap up, but we have one final question, and that is, what are different methods to use when starting with process mining in a department? So um, if I'm getting this question correctly, you are, uh, Kamal, you are asking more that how do you start? And when you start, what are the steps you have to go through? Um, so when you start your engagement, uh, there are key certain players that need to participate. So like in your discovery workshop, you really need a participation from your application architect and from your business team. Uh, again, an SME. Now, everybody knows the process at a high level. Uh, so the, you ask them to give you a 10-step process and pretty much everyone in that enterprise will be able to quickly whiteboard it. It's a nitty-gritty where it becomes a problem. So the first thing to understand is that, is there a high level understanding of the process or even that is missing? And then from a data perspective, is the data available? Or we don't even know if the data exists. Or we know that the data exists, but we don't know how to use it. So there are two different uh, aspects there. One is that you know, one is that it's completely black box and I have no idea. So that's the first assessment that happens. And once you get that information in there, then the next part is where you start working more with the application architect to understand how can I use your existing data and put it into an event log structure, which can then be used by my process mining tool. And then we go from there. So that's the like two step process that happens at the beginning. Uh, one is the analysis uh, part on how things are. And the other is that what type of mapping or data structure mapping you will need. And then you go into a jump start where you start working, looking on visualization, the type of visualizations you need, you need the type of information you are trying to extract it out, et cetera. We are at the top of the hour. And unfortunately, these are great questions. We will go, going to have to go ahead and wrap. But we would welcome any follow-up that you have. Um, you can go ahead and reach out if you have any additional questions that you thought of that weren't answered. 
Also, just a reminder, this is recorded and there will be replays available. So if you or one of your colleagues was not able to uh, participate today and would like to go ahead and see the replay, um, if you go to the Prolifics website and look under the events tab, that the replay of today will be posted. Thank you all for joining and have a wonderful day.